Hi, I'm Drew. And that's Bethany. And this is Ali. It's been said that humans domesticated dogs, but that cats domesticated humans. From the African wildcat to the Bengal tiger to the Siamese house cat, these mysterious creatures only allow us to know a little bit about themselves. Today we're going to a place full of cats, but what's so odd and mysterious about these animals? Join us to find out. <laughs> it's the cat house coming up on Oddity Odysseys. Yeah, I just don't understand why we couldn't have brought Holly with us. He hates the car. It's an environment that he can't control. Well, I mean, I would have let him drive. He's going to miss everything now. I don't think we'd be allowed to bring him in anyways. It's not like it's a pet smart. That's true. Today we're on our way to the Cat House, which is located in Rosamond, California. From the Lancaster-Palmdale area, take Route 14 north about 15 miles. Exit at Rosamond Boulevard and head west. In about three and a half miles, turn right on Mojave Tropico Road. One mile down, you'll see Rhyolite Street. Turn left and the Cat House driveway begins at the end of Rhyolite. Even if you lose the directions, just follow this That's sign. Good. They make it easy to find. Yeah. Another sign. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so this must be it. You can park. You can just park anywhere? Why not? So what is the cat house? Simply put, it's a compound devoted to the preservation of endangered cat species. In fact, it's home to dozens of species from around the world that are endangered. Good thing we didn't bring Ollie. We would have tried to admit him as a rare breed. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, let's have a look. Today we are here with Camille, who is the Director of Public Relations, I believe, right? Yes. And we are also here with Thelma and Louise behind us. So what can you tell us about these beautiful cats? Well, Thelma and Louise, they are two of our wild feline residents here at the Exotic Feline Breeding Compound. These are Canadian lynx. And what's really neat about Canadian lynx is that they are, uh, say, distant cousins of our own bobcat our California native bobcats, which you do see out here in the high desert. What's really neat about visiting here is that we keep things in such a relaxed state. It's more like a living museum than, say, a zoo. Because we don't let people yell at them or scream at them, hey, kitty, kitty, what have you, it's very serene, it's very calm, and the cats are very comfortable sleeping at the very front of their enclosure. So you can see their different furs, um, learn what they look like, the different regions they come from in the world, and that's just a sort of win-win for everybody on both sides. Right, so it's more of, um, I feel like, like you said, house, mm -hmm. the cat house, Yep. and you see them more in their natural environment, and I feel like that's more better for everybody, for the cats mm -hmm. and for the people visiting, to see that you can mm -hmm. house creatures in a way that's not demeaning to them or hurtful. Exactly. They can still be themselves, which is very exactly. Important. And what what's happened in the last say 30 or 40 years, facilities like ours have become the last bastion of survival. What we're here to do is to see that these species don't fall off the face of the earth. Right. We breed with other zoos around the world and across the country, bringing cats in or sending them out and the compatibility would depend on the age and the genetics involved. We want to make sure we have a very strong genetic line um, that's going to go on. When you're breeding endangered species, sometimes you only have like a few hundred of that species. So trying to find a compatible mate, sometimes a challenge. <laughs> right, so we need an online dating app for there these There you go. Mm -hmm. It's like an eHarmony <laughs> We'll figure something out for you guys, don't worry. Exactly. Can we see what else is down over we here? We can walk on. This place is huge. You don't realize it when you're outside that there's so much in here. No. Do you guys build this yourself? Do you kind of just put things in and let the cats do their own thing? Uh, the larger enclosures were built probably about 20, 30 years ago. They were expensive to build, not at all really in the realm of practicality, but they're pretty to look out for visitors. Running water and everything. Running the water, the things. ponds. They have the dirt floor, a nice den box they can go into, some toys scattered about. There are signs in front of all the enclosures so that even if you don't see the cat, you can see what you're looking at in there. Little Tori's taking a little nap somewhere. Tori's taking a nap. <laughs> She's not at all a morning person. <laughs> I understand that, Tori. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're my soulmate. When the facility was founded in 1977, we probably didn't start with more than maybe 10 or 15 animals. Oh, Today, wow. we're somewhere between 70 and 75. Wow. Yes. You guys have done a lot of work 18 here. 18 species, a few subspecies within that, so all told probably over 20 different kinds of cats that people can see. And that mountain lion still hasn't come out. 
last time she was making um I couldn't tell what the noise the was. The screaming noise, yeah, the barking and I was, noise. I thought maybe noise. it was coming from a plane or something mm-hmm. somewhere. And I was like, oh no, that's the cat that's doing Oh, this. there he is. Again, you have a cat that's colored the same of its background. I mean, this is right. why cats are so good at what they do. They're so see smart. See the, the big rock yeah. and see the little rock oh, with furry God. ears. I you're a rock. <laughs> <laughs> We have a little vocality going on. Yeah, does that mean anything? <laughs> it does actually. Um, everybody has something to say. Usually it's about food, territory, potential mates. They seem to get a little more talky in the wind. Uh, my theory is uh, the wind stirs up so many different smells, so it just makes the whole atmosphere a lot more interesting. So their instincts go crazy. Exactly. The leopards who we see sort of more active here have about 40 different vocalizations. That's quite a vocabulary for a cat. Um, so, it, and again, it all means different things. A nursing mother has different little noises she makes when she's calling her cub, you know, if it's in trouble, calling her to them, you know, discipline is another language. You're in trouble. Yep, and they do. Mom's responsible for discipline and the noises vary. Hi, handsome. What are you doing? Oh, we just got up. <laughs> we just got up. He needs his coffee. Django and his brother came in, but he's being introduced to the female. Mm. So, yeah, courtships. Oh, courtships go. going. And he does like his, his pool and his water. Do they get actually get full bodied oh, in there? Yeah. Or are they just mm-hmm. like kind of, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. We go swimming. Normally the stipulation is that cats hate water. Exactly. Mine doesn't. Mine likes so I turn on the shower like he runs for it. Oh really? It's not only tigers that like the water. Uh, jaguars like like the water. Uh, so in the summer we'll put out, um, we have these big, uh, uh, they're almost like the water troughs for horses, you know, li- livestock. Uh, we'll just shove that into their enclosure and fill it like with water and it's like their big hot tub. Oh, sand cat. <laughs> You're out. Hi, kitty. He says, oh my god, I'm spotted. You look like my kitty at home. Aren't they cute? They're so cute. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Look at that big head. You can see he's sort of stripey, and he's got the coloring of the sand. He like, I could have easily mistaken him for a house cat, easily. I'd been like, oh yeah, that's one you can take home, right? No. Yeah, no. <laughs> Very mean. Looks can be deceiving. We had 12 born. They've all since gone to other facilities. All the kittens were mother-raised, so they were all mean and angry, hissy things. I bet you're cuddly. Yeah, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> There is a misconception, I believe, that you guys are a rescue right. facility. I hear that's a popular mm-hmm. misconception. It is. Um, you know, and there, there are not a whole, whole lot of places that house large cats. And most people, when you, you do hear about them, when we do hear about large cats in the news, they're running around somewhere. They're in a rescue somewhere. You right. know, we, are, we are not a rescue way station type of facility. We are an active breeding endangered species conservation preservation facility. Right. And you're Hopefully a volunteer based, right? So a volunteer we donation. We do have a zookeeper staff that's on site. We take the utmost safety standards with all our staff and uh, volunteers. Right. Make sure everybody knows uh, what they're working with. These are carnivores, they're predators and they're just trying to live. <laughs> exactly. They're just trying to live. Everything's by instinct, you know? Mm-hmm. I hear that there's been a bit of an issue revolving around the high-speed rail that they want to build in this area. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, sure. It's, uh, well, you know, it's the California High-Speed Rail Authority, you know, become almost national news. Mm. Our state's attempt at building this project, the facility heard a couple years ago, they want to lay the track right on the other side of our center between us and Willow Springs. It's okay. probably about a mile. A little shocked, very dismayed because at the time, the previous route was gonna be on the other side of Sierra Highway. A little quieter, a little less disturbance. So it, it's caused some consternation with us, um, with the animals we house. Cats like a lot of serenity. They like the peace and quiet. So we're very concerned. We've made some uh, attempts at communicating with the state authority. And I think it's still under under a decision-making process. I mean, we're probably years away from seeing that project come to fruition. And in the meantime, we're watching it carefully. 
So we learned a lot more today than we thought that we would. So thank you, Camille, very You're much. Very it's very important work that you guys are doing here. Thank it's you. It's unique, it's beautiful, it's something that everybody should appreciate. So don't forget to check out the website for more information. And thank you so much. Thank you really so much. really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> As Mark Twain once said, if animals could speak, the dog would be a blundering outspoken fellow but the cat would have the rare grace of never saying a word too much. And there's definitely plenty of grace and mystery in this place. So if you want to come see the cat house for yourself, they're open 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day of the week except Wednesday. And admission is $10. And for more information on how to volunteer or to find out how to donate to the cat house, visit the website wildcatzoo.org. And on behalf of our friend Django back there who's having a nap, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. It's the cat house coming up on Oddity Odyssey. Ow! <laughs> it's the cat house coming up on Oddity Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> right in the eye, you vicious, you vicious animal. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is great though, because he's fighting. I love it. Can you give me his paw so I can put this in my thumb so I can... That one? Yeah. Oh, good job. All right, here we go. Join us to find out. It's the cat house coming up on Oddity Odyssey's.